Hello Sioux Falls and welcome to the planning preview for the month of May 2021. This month's planning commission meeting will take place on May 5th at 6 p.m. at the Carnegie Town Hall in downtown Sioux Falls. As always, we encourage members of the public to come out and give testimony on agenda and non-agenda items. Non-agenda items are anything that you'd love to come and testify about, about planning and zoning in the city of Sioux Falls. This month, we've got a full agenda, and we've got Jason Bieber with the planning office for us. Hi, Jason, how are you? Good, another busy month, so. You got it, uh, and I think for that reason, we should just get into it sure. here and uh, start going through our agenda. So let's uh, talk about the first yeah. one, uh, which is an alternative site plan to allow for a parking reduction for a medical clinic. This one's at 26th Street and Highway 11. Tell us about this project. Yep, this would be just east of the New Casey's out there in the Dolly Farm Village. If you guys haven't been out there, they've started constructing quite a few buildings buildings out there. So this is uh, just a, a future medical clinic that they're looking at constructing there and really how you do uh, do doctor visits and things have changed quite a bit. A lot of people do them online or they have uh, less people that come to the clinic. So really they provide us with kind of the reasoning why do we need less parking and how many people do you feel like I'll be there at the maximum shift. You know, as a planning commission, you guys look at that, and as staff, we look at it and make sure, yeah, that makes sense, or and uh, why have more parking and just have more uh, impervious surface instead of green grass out there. So yeah, certainly that's uh, something that makes sense for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as we can look at it and make sense, uh, yep. it works for everybody. That's a great idea. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, it's a rezone from O Office to RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential. Uh, this one looks like it's uh, in the Maple Rock development, kind of southeast there of 69th and Southeastern. Yep, correct, just southeast of the roundabout down there. If you guys uh, haven't been out that way, that area on, on all sides has really started to develop too. Um, Harrisburg schools and things are out there. So it's one of those developments that's really starting to take off. And this is just a parcel that was owned office. Um, markets kind of dictated a little bit more of a twin home in that area. So the applicant's just looking at kind of changing it to a twin home, which from a zoning and um, transition perspective is pretty similar, so. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, let's go on to the next one, a rezone from O Office to C2 Commercial. Uh, this one, I know this area well. This is out by uh, the new Jefferson High School. Mm -hmm. Tell us what they're doing here. Yep, this is kind of a rezone from Office to Commercial, and really, I think it's, uh, it's indicated uh, the reason why they're doing it is because of the new high school. There's probably gonna be some demand maybe for some more commercial with those access points on Marion Road and near the high school. So I believe the applicant's trying to shoot for kind of a uh, convenience store maybe out there, gas station, those kind of uses right across from the high school, so. Good, and I imagine we'd start to see more of that as the house taps yes. are filled in in there and the school, I would imagine there'd be quite a demand for more commercial in that area in yep, the future. absolutely, and then you've got, um, uh, you know, Amazon going and Foundation Park, so you got people going up north on Marion and then coming back south of Marion. And really this should provide, if they do get a gas station there, a great way to, to kind of get in and out real quick and get your gas, get something quick and get on out of there. So. Yeah, fascinating part of town. And I tell people yeah. who live southeast, you need to get up to that northwest yeah. side because it uh, is very different from what yep. it used to be, that's for sure. Uh, let's go on to the next one, Jason. That's a rezone from the agricultural district to the single family residential. Uh, this one looks like it's across from the Heart Hospital. Correct. Uh, so this would be the other side of 69th Street and kind of just west of Beale Avenue that goes south there. Uh, really the Heart Hospital is looking at, at putting kind of an accessory parking lot on the other side of there, doing that at this time and maybe in the future down the line there'll be a new building over there. But just a way for them to get some additional parking uh, and provide a, a safe access to them. As we know that there's a stoplight at Beale and 69th Street so it'll be a safe access point for the uh, people that park there to get across 69th Street. That's one of the things we really want to look at and make sure that those pedestrians can get across an arterial street yeah. when you do a parking lot like that. And then we also will have that preliminary subdivision plan on the agenda that night to kind of subdivide that and plat it and allow them to build that. So. Good, yeah, it's so important to make those pedestrians feel comfortable. Yeah. They're such wide roads, so it's hard to do, yes. but if, uh, if you can, it's preferred that mm -hmm. way. Very Absolutely. Good. 
Um, let's talk about the next one, uh, preliminary subdivision plan. Uh, this one's located at 5505 North Anika Avenue. That looks uh, north of the Walmart outside, yeah. up in that area of town up north as west as well. Yep, you just kind of mentioned this, uh, the northwest part of town. So this would be the area directly south of I-90 and east of Marion. So on the other side of Foundation Park, uh, really they're starting to get that going uh, to do kind of a contractor shop out there and then subdivide the rest of it some first some future industrial uses up in that area so okay very nice uh, the next item is a rezone from agricultural to conservation and institutional district it's at 4400 east 60th street so it looks like it's up in the northeast part of town yeah, correct. So this is kind of one of those exciting city projects this year, along with the wastewater treatment upgrades. This would be the law enforcement center up there, the training facility, which is, if you haven't seen uh, the things that we've gone through with the city council, kind of the picture of what's gonna happen up there, really a, a place for police that's gonna have like a vehicle training area. It's gonna have fire uh, training facilities, offices, E911 will be up there, emergency services. So it's really gonna kind of be, it's about time we get that state of the art place for our, uh, our police officers, firefighters, and have them all in one place to be able to train. So that's awesome. And I yep. hadn't been to the uh, current facility, but I heard it's due for an upgrade. Yeah. So, so this is this is great, and and really one of the great things, like I said, is um, 911 will go up there too. That's currently over at like the county. They have some pretty outdated facilities. Also, this will give them more room and have everybody together and communicating together. So that's awesome. I think it, everybody can agree it's great to see the support yes, for the first responders. Absolutely. So our next item is a rezone from agricultural district to general institution uh, recreation and O office. This is located at the southwest corner of southeastern and Bison Trail. Uh, this looks like it's for the Harrisburg School District. Tell us what they've got going on. Yeah, so they've owned this land for quite a while at that southwest corner of Bison, or southwest corner of 69th and Southeastern, um, just kind of to the west of that twin home one we were talking about. So just by the roundabout. And now it looks like uh, they're getting ready to start rezoning it and start subdividing it um, to, uh, to, to build a middle school there at some point. So it's kind of been in the works for, I would say, four years or so, but it looks like they're getting to capacity and we need to start planning to start constructing this so okay very good yeah it's amazing the growth will we've got from them mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna stick with them here because they've got some more on this agenda as well the next one is a rezone from egg to s1 institutional general institution rec and office this one is at South Cliff and 85th uh, for uh, future high school, I believe. So tell us about this one. Yeah, this this is their next high school location. I think they're calling it like an A plus learning facility right now, but it'll transition kind of into a new high school when they need that. Uh, this would be just east of um, kind of where the Avera building and the Dollar General is south of 85th Street. Um, it's gonna be a little bit south off that main pass. So another, another big building from uh, Harrisburg schools out in that area. So as you can tell, probably in the next couple of years, that area will continue to kind of develop and, and we'll get some residential around there, so. Yeah, very interesting and uh, such a big project like that, that can be uh, grow, really provide growth there mm -hmm. over time. I imagine that we'll see some more uh, rezones and change requests yep. in that area going forward as well. And that's one of the things that we like to, to work on uh, from an engineering and a planning perspective, working for those school districts to be able to when they decide where they're gonna put something, I believe we have a project in there to widen 85th Street and widen Cliff to help them out with a little bit of traffic issues um, that will arise obviously from a high school. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's what's great about our ordinance is yep. we have the flexibility to adapt and, and grow yep. as we Ex move. So. Absolutely. Uh, the next item is a plan unit development uh, amendment. Uh, that's for 3700 Northwest Port. This is the Sanford Sports Complex. Tell us about what they've got going on. Yeah, this is the the uh, second phase of kind of the uh, the U Sports. I believe uh, they've kind of had this in the paper where they got some money donated by Denny Sanford again. So this would be just to the east of Great Shots out there, and that would finish pretty much out the the sports aspect of it. That would have additional, I believe, football, baseball, soccer, softball field out there really to kind of finish out and make that really a premier campus uh, for sports, youth sports in the city of uh, Sioux Falls and hopefully that'll transition into getting us some larger tournaments because we have more capacity and, and more ways, more fields for those youth sports to play on. So Yep, yeah, I'm always good to see an amendment uh, to a PUD on the agenda like that because we know there's some new building coming yep, soon. Absolutely. Uh, so that's great. 
Uh, the next item uh, is a rezone. And we've got quite a bit of mixture here of uh, various <laughs> different things. We've got some live work, apartment, uh, high density, low density, uh, townhomes, and uh, a little bit of a change going into conservation and then adding kind of just a mm -hmm. change to all those uses uh, or where they're at, I should say. Uh, that's uh, south of Veterans Parkway and east of 41st Street by the Ben Rifle Middle School. Can yep. you uh, tell us a little Correct. bit more about what's going on there? Yep, just west of the Ben Rifle Middle School. So we zoned this, uh, annexed it in and zoned it probably two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago uh, to get it kind of ready. Um, you know, since that time, they continue to work on the development and have kind of shifted some zoning districts around, really kind of down zoning some portions of it away from the existing single family. So I know we had some uh, discussions, a lot of discussions with those existing neighbors at Copper Creek about this development. Just kind of want to make it uh, clear to them that this actually will improve, I mean not improve, but it, the density will actually be less than what it currently is zoned. Um, for those existing single family houses. So they are having a neighborhood meeting, I believe tonight to kind of discuss through some of the changes, but it's really nothing, it's more just shifting things around and maybe doing a little bit dense multifamily than what we had done before, so. Okay, good, good to see. Uh, our last one will be a rezone uh, from the C1 pedestrian oriented commercial district to the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar district located at 1950 South Blaine Avenue. It looks like it's kind of by 18th and Cleveland. Tell us about this project. Yep, this would be just north of the Frank Franklin, excuse me, food market up there. And what they're looking at doing is, is just kind of that neighborhood commercial building. But as we know in the C1 district, anything over 4,000 square feet isn't allowed. So they want to get something just a little bit bigger than that um, to go north of that uh, food store and uh, kind of provide those neighborhood services for that existing neighborhood. So they're also going to have a neighborhood meeting to make sure the neighbors are on board with that kind of a use going there so okay very good well thank you Jason yeah. uh, stick around we're gonna have Jason return for the second half of our planning preview we're gonna talk about record building permits for the 2021 year thank you hey this is Seth with the city of Sioux Falls housing division I'm here today with today's home maintenance minute uh, to talk to you about your air conditioner and how to take care of it. So one thing that I like to do once a year uh, is to make sure first and foremost that your disconnect is turned off. All air conditioners should have a disconnect on the outside as well as on the panel. So you want to turn the breaker off at the panel, turn your disconnect off outside and then you know there's no electricity in the unit. Okay then if you look on the top, there's four bolts that hold this fan assembly on. If you take those bolts out, lift this assembly out and off and over to the side a little bit, just take a simple garden hose and go in around the fins on the inside of the unit and spray water from the inside out. And so if you look on the outside of an air conditioning unit, um, there are fins. It's much like a radiator in a car. Um, and they get clogged. They get clogged with cottonwood, trees, debris, and, and leaves, and dirt, and dust. And simply going in from the inside and pushing that material out with water um, will clean that up and you, it'll keep your air conditioner running much longer. Thanks for being with me today with today's Home Maintenance Minute. Welcome back Sioux Falls. Thank you for joining us for the second half of our planning preview for the month of May 2021. I'm joined again by Jason Beaver. Thanks for coming back, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got an exciting project or topic for the second half of our program today. I always love talking about building permit data. It sounds a little bit nerdy, <laughs> but it's so fun and it's so Sioux Falls to see the fascinating yeah. growth that we get to see. Uh, so let's go through some of these numbers because sure, it's truly fascinating uh, how far Sioux Falls has mm. come in just a matter of a couple of years and even through a pandemic. Yep. So. Uh, uh, let's get into it. I think uh, some of the numbers that strike me the most is the the uh, 
total uh, number of permits issued, the value for those permits, uh, $213 million in projects for yes. uh, 2021 so far. Just tell us about some of uh, the, the high numbers that we've seen there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know if we were expecting to get this high a number. So just to give you an idea, um, so we got $213 million roughly through the end of March, so first quarter essentially of 2021. First quarter of 2022, we only had 103.6 million. And you think about that, uh, really the only month of that first quarter that was maybe pandemic related was March because January, February, we weren't shut down at all. And just to give you an idea, so we're almost, we're over double last year at this time. And last year we set our all time record at over $900 million. Wow, that's so that's amazing. Think about that. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, fascinating to see. And you, you see that uh, at last year at this time, 103 million is all kind of scary uh, to, yeah. you know, kind of think uh, that was a drop from a year before. We're not yep. used to seeing that when we were at 133. Uh, million in 2019 mm -hmm. at this time and just to come roaring back like we have very impressive it's been so, great yeah great to see uh, I take a look at this uh, new residential number for this year uh, and we hear so much about uh, new residential mm -hmm. in town right now but 31.7 million dollars in uh, permits this year so far versus last year you go back to 38.2 uh, what a big jump mm -hmm. uh, so talk to us about what we're seeing uh, in the new residential yeah. world. Yeah, great, great uh, point there. So $61.7 million this year, 38 last year. And really, um, we're seeing an influx big time in apartments. And I think a lot of those are based on one, um, some of our big industrial buildings that were kind of announced like Amazon, you've got a lot of apartments going up in that area to get ready for that workforce. And really, I think a lot of these projects, honestly, were probably a lot of holdovers from last year, a lot of those apartment projects. I think half of this maybe, if they would have had their way, would have probably permitted these last year if it wouldn't have been for COVID and kind of maybe we got to figure out what's going on before we really pull the trigger. But now you can tell people are like, Sioux Falls isn't going anywhere. We're, we're confident. Um, the uh, uh, availability rate is so low in Sioux Falls. I've talked to a couple of apartment owners and they own like seven, 800 units and they don't have one available. Like if you call them and say, I need an apartment, you know, the first times they have available is when the first one year lease is up. So it's just crazy, you know, people are like, gosh, don't we have too many apartments? And the market's saying, no, we don't have too many apartments right now. So That's, that's absolutely amazing, Jason. And I think uh, in the past, the, the market for apartments been relatively cyclical. We've seen things like Greystone get built and maybe mm. it'll slow down because uh, yep. Greystone on the southeast side brought in just so many units uh, yeah. and maybe it's slowed down for a little bit. Doesn't seem like that's the case this time, does it? It seems like they just need more and more. Huh? Yeah, I mean, just last year at this time, we had 15 multifamily units we constructed or they constructed. This year we have 463. Okay. I mean, and people are like, well, then you're not constructing any single family houses. But look at the number for that. We had 109 last year. And this year we have 187, so we have almost 80 more uh, single family houses also. So that to me is just, everything in residential is just booming, so. Yeah, that's just amazing. And I think that's uh, kind of reflective of the lack of houses on the market. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's just not a lot of older homes that are for sale out there. So everybody knows that that means yes. new construction, doesn't it? Yeah, and pretty much uh, getting into a house. I know a lot of the developers I've talked to too, you know, they'll build a house and they'll put the sign in the yard 10 minutes later, it'll be sold. So you don't even have to put it on the market. People are coming by and just buying them. So that's absolutely yeah. amazing. Uh, from what I've seen, Jason, a lot of those single family homes are in the Southeast Sioux Falls area. Is that true? Is there one neighborhood yep. that's getting built out more than uh, another? I would say the biggest ones we've got so far uh, for last year were Southeast, like you said, kind of by 41st and Veterans Parkway that where the Brandon school is gonna be, the Sioux Falls school, that area has really started to boom. Um, we really continue to grow quite a bit on the west side, west of T. Ellis over in West Westwood Valley, they're putting up a ton of houses there that are selling in two minutes at a piece, you know. Northwest, well, probably be a little bit northwest of that, but up by kind of 12th and Ellis, there's a big subdivision going out there. I mean, we've got a ton of houses being built on the east side of town too. Uh, the Brandon School District, those are going up like crazy. I mean, pick somewhere. I mean, it, it's going to really the, the place that probably this year is northwest part of town with Amazon going up there. I, I can bet we can see a big influx up in that area too. Sure. It's amazing. 
Uh, how about this number? Uh, I was kind of intrigued when I saw this, Jason. Other commercial for 2021. Uh, we took a little bit of a drop back there and went down to 8.3 million. Uh, and you go back to 2019, we were all the way up at 29.8 million. Is that just some of the categorization that happens and maybe things kind of switched in and out or any reason for that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the last two years we still, we, I think a lot of our commercial were the bigger companies that maybe are still a little gun shy about, uh, uh, about getting in, getting ready to construct it. Maybe one of the examples is Chick-fil-A. You know, we haven't even, we haven't, I don't think we've seen that permit come through yet to approve it yet. They're getting ready out there and they're gonna start construction. So we're kind of waiting on that one. We're waiting on some of the other uh, commercial ones that maybe were gonna happen last year, but maybe they're bit larger corporations throughout the, the, the country and maybe they're still a little gun shy. Cause me and you both know if Chick-fil-A would have built last year, they would probably had their best year ever here. Yep. with drive through and how people in Sioux Falls go out to eat, so. Yeah, there might've been a little bit more traffic on 41st oh, Street, gosh. I would imagine. Yes. So that will happen in the future, I'm <laughs> sure. We'll get ready for that one. Um, I think uh, with that, we should hit on some of these really big projects. And there's some of yep. them that are, uh, you know, larger than three million. And I think that uh, to me kind of signals, hey, this is a big item and mm -hmm. uh, something that everybody in Sioux Falls should really kind of be paying attention to. And we've got the list here. Uh, and this runs uh, everything that's been issued from 1-1 of 21 up to 4-1 of uh, 21. Mm, and, and the biggest of them all was uh, the wind chill expansion. So why don't you tell us about what they're doing up there at wind chill? I know this, this is kind of crazy too because this is up in um, Foundation Park, right? So we issued Amazon in December of last year. I believe that was like $150 million. So wind chills on the, like their phase three already so they built their initial building did an addition about the size of their initial building and now doing another addition about the size of their additional building or their initial building so just in the last what two months we've issued 175 million dollars in one general area of the city in an industrial park so i think that just shows you how well um, foundation park's starting to get moving and the businesses that are up there are building and they're like this is so successful we should have built this building three times the size when we started because you and i both know it's a lot cheaper to build it that big when you uh, in the first one instead of continuing it. to add phases and additions to it so i just think that shows that how well windchill has been received up there how well the location to the interstates has worked out for them so and still really a, a testament to the development foundation yep. and foundation park for what they've been able to do up there uh everybody needs to go take a look at that yes. and, and drive by those buildings are absolutely massive and it it is a phenomenal area up there and i think with uh with the city's investment with the tiff that's going up there you'll just continue to see businesses building so easy for those industrial businesses once you have the infrastructure done to say oh yeah i can see my building here instead of looking in the open field and there's you know you can't really vision it as much so i think that'll just be a catalyst up there but yeah kudos to those guys for you know putting up the money to purchase this land and, and holding on to it until something's happening which is in the last year it's really started to happen so yeah without a doubt let's go on to the next one uh almost a 23 million dollar project uh city as departments tell us about that project yeah this is another one on the east side out in sagegrass street so out by those brandon schools and and that kind of an area just Paradigm seems to be constructing large apartment complexes. Um, they've done, uh, I believe they did the one on Sycamore and 57th too. So they're just building, building, building as fast as they can out there, so. Sure. Uh, the next one, uh, $21,600,000 for a Vera Behavioral Health Edition. I know a lot of people are excited to see that go. Yeah, if, if you, uh, that's kind of our first one this year, you know, we usually get quite a few uh, of our institutional uh, Sanford, Avera do projects each year, quite large projects. This one, $21 million already is great. And if you haven't been out there, uh, you know, you told me you drove by it, but you can kind of see how big of an addition it is. They almost got all the steel up and to really give another uh, whole level and a whole nother area to that behavioral health to really continue to help it, help children and I believe there's a memory care unit, there's a senior a floor for to help seniors. So it's really gonna be able to have them provide as much uh, as they can to residents of Sioux Falls yeah. and the surrounding area. So. Awesome project for Sioux Falls mm -hmm. in our region, without a doubt. Uh, next on the list is Willow's Edge Estates, uh, Willow's Edge Apartments. That's at uh, 
uh, 400 South Hine Avenue, a uh, $9 million project out by Highway 11 and 42, I believe. Tell us about yeah. that. Yep, so this is that huge development just east of Veterans Parkway and Arrowhead Parkway. You kind of, if you've kind of seen back over in there, I mean, this past uh, six months, they were just moving so much dirt. It was crazy how much dirt they were moving out there because that's such a huge project. Well, this is kind of the first big project out there. Start doing those apartments that are adjacent to Arrowhead Parkway, and then they'll start filling in with some townhomes and then some single families. You kind of go north of the drainage ditch, and that drainage area will actually be where a uh, city uh, bike trail will go to. So keep connecting as we go farther east. So Okay, great to see the uh, bike trail expand mm, whenever absolutely. we see that. We love that. Uh, the locale apartments, that's next on our list. That's at 3000 East Bison Trail. We talked about that area a little bit further in the earlier in the show. $7 million permit. Tell us about that project. Yeah, so this would be just, uh, just east of 69th and Southeastern again. Uh, they'll probably come off of Bison Trail, but they're actually back up to 69th Street. And one of our big uh, uh, arterial expansion projects is actually to finish 69th Street. If you've driven out there, it stops and turns to gravel kind of right after the horizon elementary school. This year we're looking to finish that over to Sycamore and then Sycamore up to where it stops there. So that'll kind of complete those two arterial streets, really help some of the traffic out there. So Yeah, I bet that will do uh, do wonders for the traffic out there. Let's uh, jump down and uh, hit on one more here. Cleveland Elementary School Gym Edition. Uh, that's at 1000 South Edward Drive. That permits for about $5.5 million. Tell us about that project. So that's our Cleveland Elementary out there on 18th and Bonson. Uh, as you can tell, uh, they, they have quite a bit of open space there. Actually, it's a pretty big kind of for an elementary school campus in the in the central portion of the city or actually within the city limits. Sometimes we get those uh, elementary schools are kind of hamstrung by the, the sites that they have. They're pretty small because they've been there for so long. This one has quite a bit of open space, which is nice. So they're doing a huge gym addition, a new parking lot, really trying to uh, to create a great uh, playground and a great gym for the kids out there and really provide a parking lot to have enough space for cars because they have a, quite a few of them have to park on the street. Now that also helps the neighbors then when the staff and, and visitors can park in a parking lot and not have to take up the entire streets all the way around it. So that'll be a big advantage for that neighborhood. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining us today, Jason. Uh, awesome to hear about all the things that are going on in Sioux Falls. And I think it's really reflected in the building permits. Yeah, it's already been a great three months. And just with some of the things that we've been talking to people, I and mean, even you look at the Planning Commission agenda, it's, it's going to be a, a wild year. So it is. We're yeah. ready for it. It's exciting to see. Thank you again. Yeah. And thank you for joining us, Sioux Falls. We'd invite you to come down to our Planning Commission meeting Wednesday, May 5th at 6 p.m. at the Carnegie Town Hall. Thank you.